building a technology lab, the mindset. And this is where I want to actually step away from Cisco itself, although I know many of you, if not most of you, are here from the Cisco space. The reason that I, I created this webinar is because one of the, the number one things I always recommend, and there's, there's webinars we've done in the past, there's YouTube videos I've created on it, there's even parts of the series that I've said, okay, here's how you build a lab for this technology. Um, but I kept seeing a common theme, and it, it was something that I, I went through and I felt many moons ago when I first built uh, a technology lab myself when I was learning Cisco. I bought all of this gear, and I bought a lot, actually way more than what was right there, uh, simply because buying gear is addictive. Uh, you'll be on eBay, and they're like $50, and you bid, and, and you're thinking, I'll never get for $50. And then you get it, and you're like, oh, that's awesome. I can't believe I just got this thing for $50. I'm going to get more. And you start, you know, start buying this stuff because it's like, this thing cost $1,100 brand new, and I just got it for $50. And you start amassing this, this collection of devices, and at the same time, you end up with this pile of equipment that you look at, and you go, ah, oh, you almost feel like you have to connect it to justify the $50 that you pay. And it just starts getting older and older and older. And you start getting frustrated because you're like, ah, uh, what, what do I do with this? And you lose the whole essence of why you built the lab in the first place. Maybe you built the lab to learn CCNA and you did some stuff. But, I mean, just having a bunch of gear in the end leaves you stuck. And that's why you'll see this theme uh, throughout this entire thing that I'm going to do called Find Your Passion, um, meaning the lab environment should inspire you to learn. And what I mean by that is uh, before you ever buy a piece of gear, figure out what you're going to do with it. <laughs> now, I, I found this little image just on Google Images. Um, Knowing something, really understanding it, is power. And literally last night, um, in, in Arizona, and I, I, should, I shouldn't assume everybody knows what these are, um, a lot of houses, including my own, have these things known as swamp coolers. Um, essentially, you know, when people say, you know, it's 120 degrees, but it's a dry heat, and everybody laughs. That's actually really true. It's so dry here that we can actually air condition most months of the year by using something called a swamp cooler. And, and the basics of the swamp cooler is essentially you have water that pours down these, these porous uh, pieces of cardboard right here. And there's this, you know, this is the inside of it. There's a big old blower connected to a motor. And so there's a pump that pumps water constantly over these, uh, these pieces of cardboard and air gets sucked in. And that actually cools the house at like a tenth of the cost of using air conditioning, right? The beauty of Arizona. So, so I'm sitting there on the roof last night um, looking at a swamp cooler. Now, now I am not good with my hands. I'm not good with uh, hardware, things like I'm an, I'm an IT guy, but you know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> so, so I'm up there, you know, my kids are surrounding me. They're all watching me from down below. I'm up on the roof. You know, it's windy. And I sit there. And I, I mean, what did I do? I actually ended up replacing this belt, which had cracked and fallen apart. And I replaced the water pump of this thing. And I, I, that, that's why I picked this picture. You see that guy right there? He's like, I'm the man. I just fixed your swamp cooler. And that's exactly how I felt like that. I, I got my little walkie-talkie. You know, my wife is down in the house. I'm like, honey, kick it on. And, and she's like, breaker, breaker, here you go. She clicks on the swamp cooler. It turns on. The water starts pouring down. I'm standing on the roof, like, literally with my hands on my waist. And I'm like, I am the man. My kids are like, yay, daddy. You know, they're all clapping for me. Down there. And I felt so amazing. And I'm like, I know how to work on swamp coolers. I mean, the fact is, if, if anything more complex than that belt or the water pump went out, I would be completely lost and stuck. But I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I feel like the man. And I feel like I can conquer the world. And that's what I want you to get before you ever buy your first piece of gear. See, here's, here's what I've seen happen so many times, and that's why I titled this, this webinar, Building a Technology Lab, The Mindset, is because before you ever buy your first piece of gear, what are you going to do with it? I mean, don't just amass the technology because you'll feel that initial, like, I'm the man kind of buzz, uh, you know, as you see the pile grow bigger and bigger and bigger. But after a little while, you'll look at it and go, I don't know what to do with this. You know, so, so that's where you know, I, I look at um, the, that second point where I say certification first. Well, that's actually where a lot of people begin 
uh, buying their equipment. They're like, well, I've got to get my CCNA, you know, or I've got to, you know, I'm studying for Windows Server, uh, MCSA, or, you know, something like that. And they're like, uh, well, I've got to buy this kind of thing. And I'm, I would say, well, maybe, maybe not yet. I, you know, I'm not going to go get my swamp cooler certification. But I'll tell you what, with how I felt on the roof last night as I repaired my swamp cooler and watched that water flow down and everybody's cheering me on, my kids are clapping. Even my neighbor uh, who's, who's over the, uh, the yard was like, nicely done, my friend. I'm like, man, I want to go get swamp cooler certified. Because the more you know about something, the more passionate you feel about it and the less things will get in your way. When you have those dull days, when, I, when I'm working on this swamp cooler in a month from now because the engine falls apart because they rust out and all this kind of stuff, that's going to, you know, the, the feeling that I had last night is going to be the thing that keeps me going when I cut my fingers and I'm bleeding all over this thing, you know, and trying to replace the motor. And it's the same thing for you. The, the, when you do something that really gets your blood flowing, that helps you find your passion in this technology. That's going to inspire you when you get into the certification. That's why I said maybe you don't go for a certification first. Maybe you do something really cool like what I'm about to tell you. And then use that as the fuel because there's going to be those times in certification where you're like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, Jeremy's a great instructor and all but I don't understand a word that he's saying. Or I, you know, I've tried this and it's not working and you need something to keep you going. And that's where a lot of people burn out. So learn. Learn the concept. Dream something that you can do with it and then build it before you ever get into the first certification. So what are you building? I would argue you're not building, at least initially, when you build a lab, you're not building technology. You are literally building your passion for it. The fact that, let me, let me give you one more example that's a little more technology related than my swamp cooler guy right there. When you don't know something, you despise it. And I will use my example of Apple computers. I grew up in the Windows world. I know command prompt. I know IP config, release, renew. Why is there no IP config, release, renew on a Macintosh? And so when people say, what do you think about Apple? I'm like, I hate it. And I know that's countercultural, right? It's like, you know, it's like calling somebody's mother you know, names if you say, I don't like Apple. But I don't like Apple because every single time I try to do something, it takes me 10 times as long to figure out how Apple did it, not to mention that Apple put so many boundaries on everything they do because they're like, we're the most secure pl – anyway, I don't like it. Now, let me, let me tell you what. If somebody said, you know what, your Windows computer just blew up and you have to use an Apple, then I would learn it, and it would be like a swamp cooler to me. I know it would. I would, I would sit there and, and learn everything about Apple, and I'd be like, man, Apple's awesome. Man, why doesn't the world – you know what I mean? So, so what I'm saying is technology labs should build your passion. It shouldn't just build a technical concept. So let me give you an example of how you do this. What if – you were to design a core, a collapsed core for your house. <laughs> and I put my little recipe right here. Uh, what do you got? What, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, you take Jeremy's CCNA series at CBT Nuggets, and I'm, I'm saying that not as a plug. I'm just saying, what is a collapsed core? How do I even know what that is? Well, you, you got to have some kind of concept of what you're doing. So you take that series, and then you're like, well, what I can do is I can use in my house. A couple 3550s, how much do I get those for? Eh, 20 bucks a piece. Layer 3 switching, come on, we live in a modern world of just amazing prices. So a couple of these guys, you know, a couple 2950s that you get for 10 bucks a piece, connect these things, a little, you know, uh, trunk connection with VLANs going down and all this kind of stuff, and then, you know, take these up to your 800 series router, which connects to your DSL or your Cox cable connection, and start fanning this thing out to where you set up a VLAN for your Apple TV. If you have one, or your Roku, and you uh, have different treatments and quality of service policies, so you know your kids on Netflix uh, always get the priority over you know somebody you know surfing the web or something like that. I mean, oh, they're like this this little thing right here is so much uh, you can learn and do, and and I'm not even learning and doing. I'm building my passion. I'm building my house, <laughs> literally, in such a way that I'm like this is going to be awesome. And I can, you know, once I get this and I can, you know, fan this out and you start, start learning these other concepts and you start deploying them in your house, because you know what? There's not much difference 
between a bedroom and a cubicle or a living room and a conference room, right? It's just location. So if you learn the stuff and you really roll it out at your house, then by the time it's said and done, you end up with all the skills that you would have. And now you're like, man, this is awesome. I'm going for my, my CCNA, right? Or what if you did something like this? You take Sean's Ubuntu series, Sean Powers over at CBT Nuggets. You start learning the basics of, of Ubuntu, and then you start <laughs> getting ideas that you can do with Ubuntu. Oh, my goodness. Just go on Google. And I just, just before I did this presentation, I typed in home automation Ubuntu into Google. And there's pre-built Ubuntu appliances and step-by-step -step instructions on how to build an open source home automation system so you could start turning on your lights and you know, setting up a video camera and recording people coming to your front door and you know, da -da 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 -da. you know, all, all, all these different things. And that's just, that's just one thing. And you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I always feel like I have to justify. It. People are like, is he pushing, uh, you know, ASUS computer? No, I just, you know, this is just a cool little $200 box that you can throw into a closet somewhere that can run Ubuntu pretty darn well, right? And you can do all these things. Now, um, I'm looking at the questions. One of the things that um, I'm, I'm seeing people say is, well, what about Cisco Viral or GNS3 or, you know, da, 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 da. Um, how, how do I, how do I um, explain this? So Viral and GNS3 is step two, meaning what I'm talking about, let me, let me just jump back here. What I'm talking about, when I'm talking about a collapse core design for your house, could you build that in GNS3? Yeah, <laughs> but it's nowhere near as cool. I mean, when you there's, there's something magical that happens when you plug it in and you see it work. GNS3, viral, it's an emulated environment. You're going to have little boxes that you drag on there, you turn them on, you see the iOS, and you're in the certification world, right? That's valuable in step two. But if you start with GNS3 and viral, it's the same kind of thing. You drag these things and you stare at them, right? And you go, well, that pretty little teal icon represents a router. I I guess, I, I guess that's, let me, let me log in. <laughs> I've seen it happen so many times. People log into the router and they uh, change the host name and they set some console settings like uh, no exec timeout. They set an IP address and then they kind of stare blankly and they're like, yeah, I'm going to go watch 24, <laughs> you know, and then they're off, you know, totally abandoning the cause uh, because it's not real. So yeah, viral Jana 3, it's awesome, but it's step two. Okay. Um, so you're sitting here watching Sean's Ubuntu series, and you deploy home automation. And as you deploy home automation, you start saying, man, I would love to set up a Linux server for DNS and DHCP for my house. Or maybe I want to use something called OpenNAS on, on Linux to you know, build my own box. And then before long, you're like, but I only have one of these. And my wife or my husband said I can't buy anymore. So, so I've got to go now and virtualize. And you turn that little uh, Asus box into a VMware ESX server using the free version of ESX. And you take VMware, you know, keys to VMware series. And again, don't, don't hear me say, oh, you've got to you know, go get certified in, in, in VMware. Everything that I'm talking about right now is in finding your passion. As you do these things, what lights you up? <laughs> you can tell I'm a, I'm a pretty passionate guy. I can get on the roof and figure out a swamp cooler, and I feel awesome. But at the end of the day, I go, you know, I don't think I could do swamp coolers for a living. I would probably hurt myself eventually <laughs> in the near term. I don't like being on roofs in the 100-degree weather. I mean, all these kind of things. So, so as you're going through and you're like, man, VMware ESX is awesome, but you know what? I like server administration more. I love getting into the Ubuntu side of things. That's what I'm talking about. I'm finding your passion is which one of these things, I mean, you'll, if you figure them out, you'll like them all, but which one really lights you up and gets you going? So I'm talking VMware, you know, I'm talking just take that same little box by, a, you know, Synology NAS or what are some of the other ones? Um, um, QNAP, you know, Q, QNAP NAS. It's essentially just storage that supports things like iSCSI, and NFS to where you can store all your virtual machines on there. I mean, in three slides, guys, I've talked about building something in your house, each one of these things costing under probably 500 bucks if you do it right, um, that launch you in 
to an amazing world of technology where the sky's the limit, and you can specialize in that and do all kinds of different things uh, that establishes the career. And, I mean, these are just, again, off the top of my head, other ideas, like set up voice over IP in your house. You know, go on Cisco. Everything that's old is cheap, so go buy some 7940s or some 7960 IP phones. Get a eBay version of Call Manager, right? Set it up inside of VMware, and now you've got voice over IP in your home. Set up paging in your house. You know, have an IVR system. Hello, thank you for calling the Chara Resonance. Press one to speak to you know, and all the, you know. Set up music. I mean. The sky's the limit. Set up public wireless for your neighborhood. I've so wanted to do this. I want a little tower on my roof. I'm serious. I want a little tower that has outdoor access points that broadcasts uh, a signal that my entire neighborhood can reach. And I would have a little, you know, log on, sc a splash screen when they get on that says, you know, here's the things that I prohibit. Here's your bandwidth restrictions and all that kind of stuff. You know, do something cool. And, <laughs> and so down the road, right? You're filling out your resume and you say deployed. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think, how would you word that on a resume? Maybe you guys can think of some creative things. You know, deployed um, uh, outdoor public WAP with, you know, like all these different things that you could add to your resume just from setting that up in your neighborhood again for a couple hundred bucks. Set up content filtering for your home. Set up video collaboration. I just finished uh, teaching CCNA collaboration where it's all about video. I mean, that's the next thing. Video is the new voice, right? Everybody wants video collaboration. It gets some cheap, you know, <laughs> they're not really cheap yet, but some DX650s that you can grab off eBay. Set them up in your room, you know, video conference with your kids or your, video, your kids' video conference uh, together. Now, you might be looking and say, oh, well, that's what he meant by kids. No, that's actually not what I meant. I meant you get a thousand point bonus. You get a lifetime bonus if you involve your kids. I'm, I'm not going to get step on a soapbox too much here, but people go, Jeremy, why do you have six kids? That's crazy. Um, and, and I talked to my wife. I looked at my wife. We're, we have a one-month-old, right? And I, and I looked at her, and I go, what do you think, number seven? She's like, I think so, because we make it awesome. My kid, my five-year-old uh, uh, Josiah, that's, that's my firstborn son, has been with me on cabling expeditions to customer sites. We go on a weekend, nobody's there. I'm like, hey, come on, man, jump on the ladder. Why don't you put these patch cables in? And he's sitting there uh, patching in cables from, from the top rack down to the switch. And I'm like, oh, no, you, you want to do them like real nice and orderly. He was in the attic with me when I deployed three wireless access points in my 1,700-square-foot 17, uh, house. Do I need three wireless access points to get wall-to-wall -wall coverage? No, but... Man, it's great to fall asleep to the nightlight of a wireless access point sitting there on the ceiling, knowing that 5 gigahertz speed is at my disposal. And he's the one that did all this stuff. And the reason I say this, you know, why am I talking about kids? I'm talking, and, and this is a minor soapbox, but kids of IT people get abandoned, meaning we think that our kids can't get what we do until they're, you know, 18 and 20, and by then they're gone. Their, their mind is gone into something else. And I'm like, man, if I can build my five-year-old's passion into cabling, you know, if that's, if that's all I can do, then by golly, come on. Let's, let's go cable some stuff that I don't even need to cable, but it'll be fun, right? And by the time it's been done, at, I'm, I'm thinking eight years old, ten years old, I've got a pretty formidable cabler that I can – I'm not talking about using child labor or anything like that, but I've built something into him where he's walking away. We've come a long way from the old days of farming where people would have their kids along them. And we've got kids that just, oh, pointless. They just drift into pointless stuff. So what an amazing way as you're building your own passion and all this stuff. I mean, why would you cable your house for Ethernet in every single room? Why not? You know, why not just grab your kids on some weekend and, and go do it? Anyway, done, done with that. So turning to certification, once you build this passion that you have for the technology, then turn your attention to the certification. Now you're already fueled. You already set up public wireless for your neighborhood. Now come into Keith's CCNA wireless and fill in the gaps and, and be like, oh, that's why my neighbor three doors down said he was having trouble getting on, you know, and, and all those kind of things. Determine the concepts and then assemble them, expecting challenges. <laughs> you know, they always talk about uh, dog ears, right? When they're like, well, you know, like we have a, a dog who's 13 years old, 
And uh, people say, yeah, well, in dog years, that's like 130 or something like that, right? Well, in lab years, four hours really equals five minutes of time. I just finished uh, the CCNA collaboration. I'm into uh, uh, Cisco Arch update right now. And um, I, w I actually mentioned this in the series. Um, there was a little demo that I did that was like 30 seconds long. And I was like, and then this, and then this, and then this. And I said, just so you know, behind the scenes, doing that took me two hours, meaning figuring out how all of that worked took me two hours. And I just showed you in 30 seconds the pain that I went through over two hours of, of figuring all that out. Don't be surprised. That's <laughs> frustrating, but cashed in time. That's how you build this experience. And when people start realizing, man, this isn't working. I don't, I don't get it. And they're Googling and they're frustrated and all that kind of stuff. That's part of the joy. <laughs> I mean, that like, you don't get thrilled at repairing a swamp cooler if it works first, perfect the first time every time, right? You get thrilled when you struggle, you cut your finger, and then you're like, wow, it works, right? Anyway, you've got the idea. That's, I, I mean, honestly, that's what I wanted to communicate in this entire uh, uh, lab mindset webinar is don't just go buy equipment. Don't just go download ISOs. Don't just go deploy things without any kind of purpose, any kind of mission. Uh, do it. Do it to build your own passion. All right. I'm looking at, I'm already uh, right up to the time. So let me, I'm just going to take five minutes. Hopefully uh, Ready Talk, our conference partners will allow me to go five minutes over. I'm just going to look at the laundry list of questions that have been marked for me. Um, usually I splice them in more, but for some reason today was just my day to, to impart my heart towards you, towards uh, lab technologies and, and why they can be awesome. Okay. So uh, Pamela is saying, hi, Jeremy. I'd like to know what switch you'd recommend that, I can that can provide POE for a CCNP lab. Let me take you back to recipe number one. I would actually recommend a Cisco 3550 if you are staying in the Cisco world. Again, for 20 bucks, you can get a layer three POE switch, but I think the 3550 is only the Cisco proprietary inline power. So if you're providing power to Cisco devices, most of them take that power. If you're going for a industry standard, then uh, I'm trying to think. Probably a 3750 would be the cheapest way to go. So upgrade that guy to a 3750 if you're, again, I'm always thinking budget conscious. I mean, sky's the limit if you just want to buy a really expensive one. Uh, Guttimore says, is RIP less CPU ex uh, intensive than OSPF? Yes, it is um, for... Um, I'll say smaller networks. Uh, RIP just doesn't doesn't work well for large networks at all. Um, Joe Mar, okay, so we're we're I'm way back in the um, uh, CCNA updates. Joe Mar is saying, does this mean the new ICND one will be easier than the previous? I think not. Um, Cisco always takes the time in ICND updates or CCNA updates to flush out the questions, meaning they realize these questions have oftentimes been compromised and changed. And so they start making very intuitive questions. I would not say, even though you're like, well, I don't have to learn frame relay. Yeah, true. Um, but I guarantee you those frame relay questions will be replaced by uh, wooly questions that they throw on there. So I would not, Jomar, think ICD-1 would be easier. When will CBI I already answered that one. Uh, Hassan says, I'm CCNA certified. My company is upgrading to ACI. How can I start learning ACI? We already bought the 933 uh, <laughs> spine and leaf. Uh, yeah, um, that one, it would take a lot more time than I have right now to uh, answer. So Hassan, maybe we'll shoot you an email on that. Um, e. Hudik says, with the changes to the exam, have the books been updated? No, um, they, there, are, there is literally nothing out there for CCNA 3.0 um, unless you pay $3,000 and go to a Cisco official training center and take you know, the Cisco official curriculum. Um, that being said, Cisco Press is usually not too far behind, so I would say probably in three months, two months, you'll see some updated Cisco Press books out there. Um, Matthew said, I think I read somewhere that VPN was going to be in there. Let me just flip back right here. It seems like everybody's thinking about the new CCNA. Uh, yes, VPN is actually included in this one, ICND2. I kind of grouped together um, VPN into modern WAN, like VMVPN, getting multiple uh, VPN connections together. Um, Alcides, forgive me if I butchered your name, says, I think the CCNA running switching is going to be 
uh, harder, but not as hard as CCNA Data Center. What do you think? I agree 100%. CCNA Data Center, you don't, <laughs> you don't usually end up in a data center until you've, you've already mastered the enterprise, right? So CCNA Data Center is a little tougher. Uh, Viral GNS3, I already mentioned that. Uh, Mohammed said, thank you guys for your time. I passed ICMD2 last month. My question is, learning Python and Linux tools will help me to get my dream job as a network engineer. Um, good question. Uh, Python and uh, learning Linux is your way of automating the network. That's really where those two pieces come in. So uh, will it help you get your dream job? I'm not sure what your dream job is, but um, I will say if you know that and can automate network functions very well, absolutely. Um, Amar says, oh, I love this question. What if I use a Dell PowerEdge server for building my lab? I'm going to shoot back over here to my little Asus box. I chose this box for a reason because I used to have a Dell PowerEdge server as one of my lab components. They're awesome. But when you kick that thing on in your bedroom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? It <gasps> doesn't take long before uh, your spouse you know, anyway, uh, Asus, these little guys for a home lab is, is very quiet. Unless you have a very cool garage or basement, um, I wouldn't go Dell PowerEdge. Um, Dennis is saying, any more courses in progress like uh, the professional course, Building a Network Design That Works? Um, I love that question. Um, that was actually an idea that I had um, when, I, when I saw a CCNA certified person, actually my brother, who got a CCNA, go on to first job and was scratching his head uh, in terms of how do I actually do this, meaning he got the cert, but he had never actually done it in the real world, and he was buried. So I built a course uh, just based on his experience saying, you know what, before you, before you really do this, here's, here's what you need. And that actually uh, goes right along with the CCNA Labs, uh, CCNA for the real world. Those two uh, very real wor world courses, and yes, CBT Nuggets is actually planning on a lot more real-world courses uh, moving forward. I've seen some of the ideas. We're actually all going up to CBT Nuggets, all the trainers, in about three weeks to uh, do a bunch of brainstorming on just that. Okay. Oh, I'm out of time, but let me, hang on, let me just scan. I'm going to scan the questions. What kind of computer, lab books? Um, Matthew. How do you build for other vendors like pa Palo Alto, Juniper, um, et cetera, et cetera? What, what about other things? I, I do the same kind of thing. As a matter of fact, um, if you follow my little Twitter feed, um, about a year ago, I took a picture of me opening a Juniper, I can't even remember what it was, switch. And I'm like, you know, and I had it sitting next to my piles of Cisco equipment. And I said, uh, I said some, you know, silly comment about Juniper. But that's what I did. I said, you know what, I'm going to swap out. And that's what, that's my plan was I swapped out my core, and it still runs this way to this day at my house, is actually a Juniper core uh, layer 3 switch. <laughs> I know people are like, abandon the cause. No, but I mean, that now I know Juniper. That's, that's what I did to learn Juniper. Um, okay. Looks, looks, uh, that, that's looking at the rest of the questions, and there are a lot. I think that's about all I can squeeze in for the time that we've been allocated. So, that being said, guys, thank you for uh, jumping in. This has been a blast for me. Hopefully it has been for you as well. Um, let me pass it back to the folks over at CBT Nuggets to close us out.